Today, we're in Uzbekistan for the first time and we'll be riding their flagship train between the two biggest cities, so let's go high speed in this fascinating Central Asian country. Hello and welcome to Tashkent, capital of Uzbekistan. This was my first time visiting the stands and I absolutely loved it. Uzbekistan in particular offers great history, great value for money and super friendly people. I'll definitely be coming back soon. OK, let's head to the station in preparation for our trip from Tashkent to Samarkand on board the only high-speed train in the region, the 250km per hour capable Afro Siab service. And isn't Tashkent station just stunning? This is actually a running theme in the whole country with some absolute gems of architecture and style. Access to the station complex is granted after a ticket and passport check by the security guards. <laughs> Top tip, you can bypass the paper ticket tour group queue by heading to the right hand side which is the queue for e-tickets, if you have one of course. And then, on entry to the station building, a baggage x-ray and personal metal detector scan is carried out. Don't worry, it's not that thorough and there's no limit on liquids, etc. Don't bring a gun, though. Once inside, you'll find a medium-sized concourse with an information desk, departure boards and a few shops. <laughs> Off to the left-hand side are more shops and a waiting room. And to the right, you'll find the VIP lounge. As we're travelling in VIP class today, we can access this for no extra charge. It's a lovely chilled place to wait for the train. We didn't have much time to check it out properly, but I believe drinks and light snacks are complimentary. Let me know in the comments below if this is the case. There are four morning departures between 0728 and 0859 to Samarkand and Bukhara, and then nothing until 1845 when there is one more. All the morning departures then all return in the evenings. Weird. They all just line up on platform 1-2 and pull forward once the previous service has departed. These trains are nearly identical to the S130 sets which run Alvia high-speed services in Spain. OK, let's board. Ramps are stowed on board the train to allow access for wheelchair users. We'll see the dedicated disabled facilities later on. The attendant greets everyone at the door and after checking your ticket directs you to your seat.
As mentioned, we'll be in VIP class today. There is one of these at each end of the train located in this small cabin which is in a 2 plus 1 layout. There's plentiful space for luggage to be stored, either on these stacks or on the large overhead racks. The ambiance is great and the seats look fantastic, but we'll check them out in more detail once we get going. Our train today is the 0800 departure from Tashkent, running non-stop to Samarkand, a distance of 326 kilometers. It will then continue on to Kwashi. This is scheduled to take two hours and eight minutes of travel time at up to 250 kilometers per hour. The cost of the tickets on this train are as follows. VIP class is 202,000 Uzbek Som, Business class is 140,000 Uzbek Som and economy is 103,000 Uzbek Som. You must book these tickets early though, as in the day they go on sale, as due to limited amount of services they sell out very fast. You can do this direct on the Uzbek Railways app or through a third party vendor, but expect to pay a premium for this. If you want ad-free, early access to all my releases and to help me make bigger and better videos, then become a channel member from just £1.99 per month. Just click the link above now. Thank you. Shortly after departure, a paid trolley service begins, but I'd hold off on this for now as the complimentary food and drink service will begin shortly. And here it is. There was no choice or vegetarian option. There was a cold omelette, some meat, bread and some salady bits, and it wasn't particularly nice, but as being included in the ticket price, I won't complain too much. Unlimited tea or coffee is also included. OK, time to check out the seats here in VIP class. They were as comfy as they look, with great padding and support, an adjustable armrest and a winged headrest. They also recline a good amount by using this button down the side. An entertainment system with headphones is also provided, although I didn't use this. Coat hooks, reading lights and a sun blind are also available. The AC vents are just below the window, and this worked very well throughout the trip. This was great as it was 38 degrees outside. Legroom is good, and there's a large table where newspapers and tissues are provided. One European style power socket is available at every seat. One of the biggest criticisms of these trains, and Talgo sets in general, is their ride quality. There was certainly some clunking, which some say is down to their unique wheel arrangement of just one pair of wheels between two carriages, as seen here. Here is a look at business class. This is in a 2 plus 1 configuration and makes up two coaches of the 10 coach train. In the second one, you'll find the accessible toilet, followed by the wheelchair spaces.
Next up is the buffet, which is just counter service. If you connect to the onboard Wi-Fi, you can find the menu here. It's reasonably priced, and in theory there's a good choice, however be aware, I tried to order a few different things and they were all out of stock. You can take your purchases back to your seat, or there is also a small standing area where you can socialise with other passengers. In the end, I settled for these cottage cheese pancakes and an iced tea. The total cost was 30,000 som. Here's a look at economy class. These are the cheapest seats on the train and still offer most of the amenities of the higher classes including good comfort and power sockets but at around half the price of VIP class. There is also much more availability. Keep a lookout on the right hand side after Jizak and you'll see some amazing train window views by the way of these natural rock formations. One other thing I've noticed is the Uzbeks love their hilltop advertising. I'm not sure if I like it or not, but it's certainly interesting. Oh, you thought I'd forgotten? Not likely. The toilets were reasonably clean, stocked up and all working. However, I did notice a design flaw in that when you waved your hand to activate the water, it also turned on the hand dryer which then blew water all over you. As we are now approaching Samarkand and the end of today's journey, let me summarise my experience on the Uzbek Railways Afro Siab service in VIP class. Considering the cheap prices, great comfort and complimentary food and drinks offering, I'd recommend this train to travel between Tashkent, Samarkand and onwards to Bukhara. The negative points were the ride quality is not the best and it was disappointing that the buffet was out of stock of a lot of items. It also seems silly to me that the trains don't operate a proper service pattern and nearly all just go outbound in the mornings, sit around all day and return in the evenings. But it is great to see Uzbekistan having invested in high-speed rail and European standard trains as their flagship products. The AC was certainly worth its weight in gold on this stifling Central Asian midsummer's day. We arrived two minutes late at 10 past 10. Have you been on any trains in Uzbekistan before? Which ones? How did you find them? Leave a comment below. Our train now continues to Kwashi. Let's enjoy the departure in full. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps. I release a new video every Friday, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.